You're listening to What is a Woman, a podcast for women hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the What is a Woman podcast hosted on the Catholic Family Podcast. I am Holly and I'm here with my mom, Mandy. So ladies, grab yourself a coffee or a tea, whatever you like. Come and join us for a little bit of girl time. You may have to put the baby down for a nap and let the mess go for just a moment, but we promise it'll be worth it. Men, you can feel free to stay too. You might find some of this interesting, but I think we need to give a little bit of a warning. Yes, yes, just a tiny one. Just a tiny warning. Just a tiny one. So this podcast, um, primarily, we're bringing it for women. Right. So women... So women can learn how to navigate... In this crazy world of ours, uh, that's very upside down. That's very upside very down, upside and down. we feel that the role of the woman has been completely twisted and bent and turned. So no one really knows what a woman's role is yeah, anymore. They don't know what a woman is. So we thought we'd give this podcast in um, according to the Catholic Church. So what is a woman? According to the Catholic Church. Because she states very clearly. She's told us yes, very clearly. The, the, where it is very clear what a woman is, is in the Catholic Church. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much going on right now. So we wanted to bring this podcast to kind of help us, because we're not experts here in any way, shape, or form. Um, but we thought we could do this and we could all um, learn a little something. And I'm right. sure my mom and I will both learn something. Yep. As never we go too through. old to learn. You're never too old to stop learning. So, But we did want to just give a little note to the men before we start. And you're like, okay, why am I listening to this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're more than welcome to stay. You may learn something too. Right. Um, but we don't want we don't want this to turn into, uh, how do we say, mom? The well, battle of the sexes. <laughs> the battle of the sexes, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, well, you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that. Yeah. You know, like you can't. If everybody is on a road to sanctity, is that's what we should be. That's what yeah. we all should be, right? We yeah. should all be on this road to sanctity, whether you're a man or a woman or a child, you know. So men have a certain duty to perform to get them to where they need to be. And women have a certain duty to perform too, right? And it's different. They're they different. are. The vocations are the vo- very different. The, the vocations are very different. And this is the, this podcast, we're going to kind of dissect the sacred vocation of womanhood yeah. and motherhood. And, and um, we have a great book that we're going to go through. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Um, but we just, we just want to make sure that we put this out there. Right. You know, and, and I don't, I mean, I know maybe our listeners are all really great men. But it is a little bit of a tendency for men who are frustrated. Let's and not, men and men, men have every right to be frustrated. And they have every right to be frustrate, frustrated to, you know, be like pointing fingers and going, you're supposed to be doing this and you're supposed to be doing that. And, you know, and so when we're here talking, saying, okay, the woman's supposed to do this and this, you know, and we don't want men, you know, your road to sanctity is your road. And it's not going to help you in any way, shape or form to bring up what the woman is doing or not doing. Doing, yeah. Right, you know? Like if you want to change a circumstance or what's around you, you really have to focus on yourself. Right, because you can't, you know, one thing I've learned, and I, it, I'm i not old by any means, but I feel like I, if I would have learned this a long time ago and really taken it to heart, my life would be a little bit different. <laughs> no, you and me both. But I feel like, you know, I should have learned a long time ago that you can't change anybody anybody all you can do is change change yourself yourself. you can influence other people yeah but you can't change them you can't change them you know so if people have you know maybe feminist tendencies or even if sometimes people don't think they have feminine tendencies feminist not feminine feminist Feminist. (laughs) tendencies you know they don't they they don't think they have because everything's all messed up Mm -hmm. so like you know if we're living in a messed up world how you know how difficult is this yeah you know how extremely difficult how difficult is this you know everything is difficult well and the reason my mom and i um wanted to start this podcast is her and i watched together the um popular matt walsh documentary what is a woman and if you haven't heard of that and if you don't know who matt walsh is you can look it up um basically matt walsh 
created this documentary because we all know that we're living in very turbulent times. Yeah. And uh, there's and we, a lot of things going on. And all of a sudden we live in a world where men think they can we're, be women. Right. So he made this documentary, <laughs> you know, he wanted to go out into the streets and ask people, what is a woman? And basically nobody could really answer him. Nobody yeah. knows what a woman is anymore because their answer is all the same. Well, it, anyone can be a woman. If I feel like me. If I feel, you know. that. And all. I was just like, and I mean, I had this argument years ago with somebody about, you know, well, I feel like a woman. And I said, what does that mean? You feel like getting up in the middle of the night to change, you know, a messy bed when a child's been sick? You feel yeah. like, you know, waiting on children and, and men. You feel like serving big dinners. You feel like doing all this stuff that women are generally given to do like is that what you mean by feeling like a woman because when i say i feel like a woman that's what i mean that's what i mean you know i'm yeah. here i'm here in service so there's more to just being in a, from a secular standpoint there is more to just being a woman than putting on lipstick and yeah. what do you say mom lipstick, lipstick and, and pantyhose. pantyhose like i mean i was personally extremely insulted like, yes i mean it's, you think you this think that's what, what a is? woman is? Yeah. Do you think that lipstick and pantyhose and playing with Barbies? Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, let's be a little bit real about these confused people. Mm -hmm. They're not running around. You know, they're they're like children. They're, yeah. they're, they're very playing immature. Dress up. They're playing dress up. And there's way more to being a woman than playing dress up. Than playing dress so, up. So what my mom and I want to do is we want to answer this question. What is a woman? What is a woman? But according mm -hmm. to the Catholic Church, because that's where, that's where the your answer firm is. and solid answer comes from. Right. What is the a woman? The Catholic Church. So, you know, we want to start this podcast and it's going to be hopefully be several episodes if everybody likes it. And um, we get a good response. We get a good response. People don't throw rotten tomatoes at us. Well, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, you know, we want we want to keep it light. We want to keep it fun too. My mom and I, we do like to. We come from a family that we do like to, you know, have fun and we like to laugh and we like to uh, yeah have a good time. We like to have a good time. So you may you may find that endearing, or you may <laughs> you may not. <laughs> Anyways, but um, um, mom, do you want to kick it off? Because my mom had a great um great answer right from the bible well um, it's it's in genesis right from the yep, get-go right what from is the get-go where it tells us what um, a woman is yeah so where's genesis holly you want to oh, you want that? me to read it so yeah. my mom pulled this bible quote to start us off here so genesis chapter 2 verse 18 and the lord god said it is not good for man to be alone let us make him a help like unto himself right so right off right off right the off get, the bat god, right off the bat, god's telling us sorry ladies yeah. We're a helpmate. We're a helpmate. You know, we're a helpmate. We're not, we're not the lead, leaders. We're not, you know, uh, that doesn't mean that we can't be, be a, a leader. leader. That just means the general pop, the general purpose of the creation of wo a woman was to be a helpmate to man. Yeah. Right. And as we know, like everybody, uh, I mean, the first, whenever you're studying the creationist versus the evolutionist the they always use the example of a clock right mm -hmm. they say a clock just didn't magically appear somebody had to make the gears somebody had to do all the stuff to make the clock work properly right right so that person we know is god is the creator right so he designed the clock now when when you take that clock and you start pushing the arms the wrong way or you overwind or you do all that you do you don't run the clock according to the way the clock is supposed to well, be run you're messing with the invention you're messing with the invention and what's going to happen well, it's going to break it's going to break it's going to be it's not going to work it's, it's not going to tell all... time and it's, it's going to be a mess right yeah. you're going to ruin it so if we were designed by god then we have to say to ourselves that god knows what how he's this, doing what he's doing we have to have that confidence right. and that faith right that he know he designed this to be a particular to work a particular way mm -hmm. so if women want to go against that way like if they if they're adamant that they're not going to be 
in service that they're not going to be a helpmate what's going to happen they're going to be in for a life of misery I think. they're going to be in for a life of misery because they're going against the creation they're so, going against what they were designed for they were going against what they were designed for so you know the springs are going to start to ping 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 you know well that you know and, and it's funny because chaos that's when you hear all these women in the corporate world and they're break what do they say they're breaking, breaking the, the glass, glass ceiling. ceiling yeah they're clawing their way to the top they're doing okay well <laughs> You know, if you were, if it was just that naturally that was where you were supposed to go, yeah, you wouldn't have to break through the glass ceiling, yeah, would you? I know. You and know, then, I mean, to be honest, because I've had many of uh, dealings with feminist arguments over them, right? And there are many women through history who have been leaders. Yeah, but they were put there. Well, I mean, my my biggest. That's what I think. Don't you think? Well, successfully, successfully, if they were successful. I mean, you can go back to Margaret Thatcher. I, I mean, and I had this argument with a feminist once. I said, well, the, uh, Margaret Th- Thatcher was president of uh, the United... Or Prime Minister. Prime Minister, sorry, Great of Britain. the United Great Britain, right? I said, how come nobody said women made it? Yeah. Well, they don't like Margaret Thatcher. Oh. They don't like Margaret. You know why? Because yeah. she's too manly. <laughs> so she didn't break through the glass ceiling she being just, a woman. She, she just, broke through it being a man. Right. So, uh, you know, but whatever. I mean, we're, I'm not here. I don't care about all these secular people. Honestly, I don't. Right? No. We, um, we, what, we, what do we care about? I, was like, well, I shouldn't say I don't care. Yeah. I just, this is not, this is not what we want to figure out. We no. want to figure out where the woman's role truly is according to the catholic church according to the catholic church right so anyway so we know that it, god has designed us genesis tells us right off the bat t- not to be the leader to be the helpmate right so if we go back before christ you know with the egyptians and the romans and all the pagans and and all these people right the women were articles of trade they were slaves right, right. they were bought and sold they, they did not have a position or a status at all. I mean, in the Old Testament, they didn't treat their women like that. But in the um, in ancient history, they did. Right. So when Christ came, one of the key things that he did was he elevated the status of women. And he did that with his treatment of Mary Magdalene. Yeah. You know, and he did that um, mostly by putting Our Lady on a pedestal. Yes. He elevated womanhood. Right. Right. So, so all these people, all, you know, so from that moment on, from, from the time of Christ on, women had a a righteous place in their communities and their societies. I mean, as the world gradually turned away from paganism and towards Christianity. But it was more like they were, it was more like. Christ put them in a place of dignity and yes. respect. Like dignity he, and it respect. wasn't that he took them and he he came and he put women like okay, you women are going to be the great leaders and you're going to be this. No, no, he just said he you, just said you, you can't treat women you can't like treat this. women like this. Yeah, right. You know, men men by their nature are far more powerful than women. Right. Like I mean, if and I mean to me, I find this a little bit scary because we live in an unchristian society. Yes, we do. So what is holding the men back? From doing whatever they want. From doing whatever they want. Not much. Not much, right? Yeah. Maybe the government right now. Maybe, but yeah. How long is that going to last, right? Yeah. I mean, when you live in chaos and unchristianity, it just kind of takes over. But so so anyway, so we're moving along all through history, and, and women are finding themselves to have, you know, a reasonable role in society, the homemakers, you know, I mean, and the saints, the saints, women saints are rising up everywhere. Yeah. You know, they're they're starting convents and um, hospitals and schools and they're, you know, they're really important people of society. They're not, they're not just oppressed. They're not, and they're not just in the kitchen. <laughs> they're not just in the kitchen. <laughs> but to be fair, most women of stature, though, like if we took St. Helena the Cross, right? Well, she's she was in a royalty she was, she position. Was, she was in a position because of who her son, son. was. But well, she was royal, was she not? Yeah, St. Helena the Cross. Well, she was, um, her story was, she was in a, 
she was an Egyptian, like she was a Roman, sorry. She was a Roman. And so her husband, who I can't remember his name, they were married. And um, the, uh, what do you call him? A Caesar? I don't know. Oh, like the emperor. The emperor. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's the word I'm looking for. Emperor. He came and he said, he said to her husband, he said, okay, you're not married to her anymore. We yeah. need you to go over here and be married to this person because we need to form an alliance with this country. Oh, my. <laughs> so he had to pack up his things, things. Yeah. and leave his wife. Yeah. And uh, she was devastated, absolutely yeah. devastated. So she's she's a, a Roman, and she's just like, how is this happening to me? Yeah. How is this happening to me? And, um, and one of her servants was a Christian, right? right? And she said to her, she said, if you were Catholic, this never would have happened to you. Right. He would never have been allowed. He wouldn't have been allowed to do that. He wouldn't have been allowed to do this. So, so of course, being besought with grief, of course, she just, St. Helen just dived right in. And it's like, tell me more. I need to learn about this Christianity. I need to learn about Christ. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she because she was in such a high position, eventually her son became emperor, Constantine. Right. Right. So, and because his mother was, you know, like, like all sons and their mothers usually, you know, they... That's my mother. She gets to do what she wants, kind of yeah. thing, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, so all the doors were open to her so she could tromps around the countryside and she was deciding she was going to find the true cross, right? right? So she was in a position to, to do, do that, that yes. right? You know, the average person is not in a position. But let's um, let's say, I mean, that's like the perfect example. St. Helen is a perfect example. Like that's that's the way a woman gets treated yeah. in in a pagan society yeah. versus a Catholic one. Yeah. I mean, we can call it Christian. I mean, at the time, there was just Catholics. There was no other religions. Right. But you know, still. But, but anyway, so time goes marching on. And, and one, of, one of the places where I saw the biggest difference, well, I mean, where I noticed, like, I was, I, I'm a great documentary watcher. I mm-hmm. love the documentaries, right? So I was watching um, Tudor Farming. Um, on BBC. BBC, right? I love it. I recommend it to everybody. She does. You know, I mean, <laughs> Tudor farming is at the time period of um, Henry the Seventh. Yeah, I believe that's in the 1500s. I'm not very good with dates. dates. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we and, all. I think we all know who Henry the Seventh is, right? Pretty much. He's the father of Henry the Eighth. Yeah. Right. And so, we all, I think we all know who Henry the Eighth is. We all know is. who Henry the Eighth is. So. So what's going on in England at the time of Henry the Seventh is he's he's a good Catholic, and England is basically being run by the monasteries. Mm-hmm. So the BBC gets a couple of digs in there, like they try yeah. to act like you know, look at the monasteries, Spirit. but they weren't. They weren't oppressing anybody. Well, you can't. How could you say they weren't? They weren't right. So you could so say they whatever you to, want, they, but they tried to throw some digs. But like you're watching it, and you're just like. Oh my gosh, how do I get to live mm. like that? What a lovely life. What a lovely life, you know. And and at that time period, England had the nickname for being the land of milk and honey because everything was so of abundance. Everything mm-hmm. was was so, you know, the people lived well. They were happy. They were healthy. They were, you know, and it was a man and a woman. They, they lived on their little farms and right. under the monastery. So they had to, you know... I guess a monastery would be in charge of a certain amount of land, right? right? And, um, but it was beautiful. Like you did not see any, I mean, and this is the BBC. Like if they, if if they they could have, they spun it another way, they would have. They would have done it so that that you could, you would see the oppression of women. But there was none. But there was none, right? So, I mean, the man, he's, you know, doing his things and the woman is equally doing the things. Right, you know, I, I remember watching a show where. But she's, she's. But the key is there. She's doing the things, and she has her duties, but she's not oppressed. No, no, right. And I mean, in all those things, like a lot of our our great Christmas carols come from that time period. Yeah. Like God rest you, merry gentlemen, mm-hmm. deck the halls with. Bows of holly. Bows of holly. Yeah, right. <laughs> holly, holly. <laughs> but anyway, so that's that's because you know when I was watching shows on how they decorated for Christmas and all the Catholic ceremony. I mean, it was just beautiful. It was yeah. just beautiful, and in their kitchens and under their hearths, and the woman's there, and you know they're out, they're making cages out of reeds, and the woman's doing it, and the man's doing it, and everybody's nobody is just a peaceful time. Just a peaceful, good 
time. Yeah. But what comes after? But what comes after, right? So King Henry What's the, the next VIII, series in the movie? So King Henry the Eighth, he takes the throne, right? And then we have the Protestant bloodbath. He was yeah. a, he was good for about thirteen years. Yeah. Until he didn't get his own way. He didn't get his own way. He didn't get his son. Right. He didn't get so, what he wanted. And, he didn't get what uh, he wanted. And we all know the story. We all, yeah. This is this is the Protestant Reformation, right? Yeah. So England just becomes a ball of fire. So BBC puts out another series uh, during this time period for women. And they call this series Harlots, Housewives, and Heroines. I recommend you can watch that too. It's I mean you you'll you'll be horrified. <laughs> you will goodbye Tudor farming goodbye and hello to, oppression. Uh, goodbye Tudor farming <laughs> and hello oppression because the women and, Well because who's in charge now? The Protestants. And what who do the Protestants hate? Mary. Mary. So it's like, just like So you know where that's going. So like, they dethroned Mary yeah. and the women went down with her. Yeah. Christ put her on the pedestal. And they knocked her off. And they knocked her off. They weren't having it, right? So everybody knows. I mean, we know how Jane Austen ruled. Yeah. We know that time period. You know, the women had nothing. You know, she she was denied property. She was um, denied her money. She was de- 100% dependent on men. Yeah, though she ha- they had to marry. A lot of the marriage decisions were based on, like, you know, like the girls' dowry and stuff, were yes. they not? Yes, you know? and then who was going to like keep Like the me? father could take the daughter and say, you know, if some wealthy man came and wanted her dowry. Yeah. He could you just, know, he could it, just say, just, oh, yeah, she you had, She really... She really had no say, no nothing. She had nothing. and they Basically, did, they just took the woman and put her back, right? Right, to an article of slave and trade. A, right. Yes. I mean, and not like when you say slavery, when you think of like, you know, slavery, but in a way, yes. They were, they, it was awful. They well, you had, told me that they could muzzle their wife. They could muzzle their wife. and Like they, actually muzzle them with a piece of machinery. With a, they, they had muzzles. <laughs> and if, they could slap that on their wife. If, if, if your wife talked talk too, too much, much. She, you, you as a husband had a right to put a muzzle on her. Isn't that? You know who wouldn't do that? The Catholic, Catholic Church. Church, right? <laughs> so when you watch this show, you can see very clearly where it all started to kind of where it all starts to go south yeah yeah where it starts to go south right i mean and i when i was watching it i'm just like well this is all protestants and it was coming from the protestant ministers yes right so these were the decrees being handed down not by the government not no. by the catholics it was the protestant it ministers. was the protestant ministers like uh, henry the eighth he made the church and there was a other part there was all there was so much protestant going on in england at this time like john knox and all these other protestant oh yeah he was horrible like there there was a lot of fighting over what protestant is best too, right. right they could they didn't even have a um they didn't even have like a set thing in their own religion no like it was just a mess. It was just a mess. So all these ministers were making these things and, and it was all to put the woman in her place. Yeah. Like, and it was like, it's bizarre. It's bizarre to think. And no, and I've never heard anybody actually point this out. Like you, you, yeah. do, you have not noticed where this oppression of women stems Again. from. Like, and you can see, like I, I can see why as a woman, you know, you would be, I'm not taking this. Yeah. Right? Everything about me depends on you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, on, you know, all these men. And, and, a, and a lot of them weren't good. I mean, the women, you know, like, I mean, well, that's what happens when you take away truth. The truth, the virtue. and the... Yeah, That's what happens when you take away the truth. You end up with chaos. What are we doing with that clock? We're pushing mm-hmm. the arms in the wrong way. So yeah. when we start pushing the arms in the wrong way... You know, all hell breaks loose. And these women, they fought They fought for that. So that's, I mean, basically where feminism started from. And you can see why. Like, I can yeah. see why. I just know that the solution would have been... Go back to Catholicism. Yeah, go back <laughs> to being Catholic. Although I, I know we say that, but would, it wouldn't have been that easy. Oh, it wasn't easy for them. You know, it would, like, you know, if your whole family is turning to Protestants, protestant like say your dad is saying you know you know what are you gonna say no dad i want to be a catholic um well there's a lot of saints saints. no i know i know i should there's a lot of saints (laughs) but i mean the general but general people are unfortunately not so maybe versed in the religion yeah 
or or fervent in their beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, it's a story as old as time. I mean, it's how Vatican II happened, right? If the people really knew their catechism, they never would have allowed it to happen. Yeah. Never, right? But uh, we we don't. People are weak, and they, and many are called, and few are chosen. So, but here we are, all these years later, mm -hmm. and we still have the the tools and you know all the stuff we need to navigate through this mess yeah we do oh everything we have everything we need to pull us back and um you know and hopefully we can pull as many people with us as we can right 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 well, so that's, that's what the saints do that was the message of Fatima. yeah was to um become holy and spread sanctity right so my mom and I um, have this little book called, what's it called, mom? You have the book over there? I have the book over I, there. There's a, my mom had her own title for it, but it wasn't I right. always call it the mission statement of women. But it's actually called Mission and Duties of Young Women. Right. So this is a great book. Um, when was it written, mom? Well, here, what, it was written at, eight, well, here we have, 1888. 1888. So, wow. So that's a long time ago. We're going to go... This why, don't, is, why don't you tell us... You read that, please. You're a better yeah. reader than I am. Oh, am I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this book, um, it's actually translated from French, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was written by... Or, sorry, translated by Charles I. White. And, um, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Was it, it written it, by it him has, or translated by him? I don't know. It's so old. It's and, so old. And the print is actually kind of hard. The print is hard to read. So I'll tell you guys, my mom found this book on eBay. Yeah. Was it eBay? Yeah. And she bought it and was like in bits and pieces. So for the longest time, she carried it around in a pencil case because if she didn't, all the pages would end up all over the bottom to of me, her the purse. Book was, to me, the book was life-altering. It was life-altering. Altering. Life-altering for my mom. So, um, but this um, book was approved with the approbation of the most reverend Archbishop of Baltimore. So, um, we're going to go through this book and... Um, Hopefully, we'll all learn something. When I read this book, I have to read a few sentences and then I have to kind of ask my mom a few things. Because like we were saying earlier, it's written in the 1800s, right? Yeah. So this is language that we, we've we lost. Right. And it's we've not lost easy. It's this not style easy. of writing. It's we've not easy to understand. No, like, it's not easy well, to what understand. What are they trying to say there? Because, you know, like I was saying, we talk with a lot of slang and we use a lot of words that, you know weren't a thing back then right and they yes. they use a lot of words in here that we don't use anymore and their terminology right sometimes things sound a little bit harsher maybe than it actually is is yeah like i know um i know like there was in the catholic girls guide there's one chapter about you know not leaving your village not leaving your village? Yeah, right. So I remember we were reading it. I was reading it with your sisters. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, we don't live in a village. You know, like, how, how, how is Isn't that? Isn't it a metaphorical village? Well, I mean, for Or was us, it not for them? No, for them, it's not. For them, it's it, real. Right. I mean, there was also, there's also a chapter on how to, you know, deal with your servants. Right. Well, that, that won't really apply. It, <laughs> well, it, it does, right? It does, but you, what you have yeah, to do... Yeah, you have to turn it and... You have to turn it into... You have to be able to turn it into your circumstances. Senses. Like your yeah. village is not per se... We don't live in little villages anymore. But, but we, we have, have a, a village community. within the church. We have a community. You could call the people of the church your village. Yeah, we have you a know, community. The Catholic community is your you village. Know, and we may not have... I may not have to deal with servants, but I certainly deal with people who are beneath me. Right, like every, and when I say beneath me, what I mean is everybody's on a ladder. Right, and and I mean, I've always said, I've anybody I've taught anything to, I've always said you need to find your place on the ladder. Right, because there's always going to be someone above you and, and someone, someone beneath below you. you. So when always. you're talking and dealing with people, you have to know who's above me and who's below me. Because I mean, let's be real, even if at, you're at the very, very top of that ladder, there's still always somebody else above you. Yeah, there's God. And that's God. So I, you will you know, never be at the yeah, top and, of the and ladder. I can't, it's very, I mean, how, how many people get to the very top of that ladder? Right. Like how, get who are close. you to be at the very, I mean, if you were maybe the king or something, but even right. like, you know, even in our day and age, royalty, like, you know, England, they're still answerable to parliament. Yeah. Like they still don't get to be, to be top dog. Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. You know, maybe. 
Well, so we, we're going to go through the preface here and just kind of, so we're going to use this first episode of our podcast just to kind of really give you a brief introduction um, of, the book. of the book. And then on our next episode, we'll dive right into the book. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to read just a little bit here just to start us off. So the object, so this is from um, Mission What's it called? and Duties of Young Women. Quote, the object of this little work is to explain the lofty mission of women on earth and to indicate the principal obstacles that may oppose its fulfillment, end quote. So basically, right there at the very beginning of the book. It's a it, lofty mission. It's a lofty mission, ladies. So, you know, it's not. And this, and I, of course, I've already read the book, so I know they take it. Yeah. Very serious. Well, and you, as you should take it very seriously. As you should take it very serious. And it is, um, and it is a high calling. A high calling. You yeah. know? So, you want to read on some more there? Okay. Quote, unfortunately, most of the books that are read by persons of the sex in reference to the part they are to act on, the theater of life, treat this subject from a merely human standpoint and frequently convey impressions dictated only by the false wisdoms of the world, right. end quote. Right. So break it down, Mom. Well, you know, <laughs> the false impressions of the world, right? So so what we're doing, um, what we mostly do, even if we don't intend to do it, is we're picking up all the odd bits and pieces that come into our lives, like uh, through music. Oh, yeah. Right? Television. Yeah. Uh, our teachers, if we had outside teachers, mm -hmm. our workforce, right? And so they're false. Mm -hmm. They're not true. So we're picking up off of people who are, and we might just call them bad example, right? Even, even though maybe they're nice enough or they're just normal people, but they have little ideologies that don't swing with the Catholic Church. And, and you know what's so funny is this, this book is written so long ago yeah and it's still saying that it's still saying that and and around the 1800s you know i mean i'm not wrong in saying this they they had way more morality than we have now they were a christian society they were a christian society and this book is still saying you that know, it was a lot of protestantism but i know like i know there was a lot of Protestant, but they still had common decent morals yes you know and like, and they still say um, and it's still telling you, but it's still telling you that there is falseness there is that a lot you of... have to be careful of. Right. Yeah. You know, okay, let's get back to the preface here. So quote works of fiction, especially exert a most powerful influence in the propagation of those erroneous ideas by which young women are led to a misconception of the nature and extent of their obligations and become insensible of the numerous and fearful dangers that surround them, end quote. So um, basically just going up. Yeah, but the Morgan. works of fiction, I mean, I think I'd like to drive home the music. Right. Like because obviously they're not, they weren't referring to music, but this is where you have to say you have to take these works from long ago and apply them to what's going on now. Yeah, and the, the music, music is so dangerous. I mean, I mean, if you, right now, I mean... I hear a little, I don't listen to the radio, you don't listen to the radio, so we're a little out of touch. But we're not that out of touch. Because you hear it in every store you, you go in, everywhere. every restaurant. And sometimes every... I'm like singing a song and it's disgusting. I'm like, whoa. A, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah. And B, where did that come from, you know? And I, I know how I know it because we, we can't escape it. You can't escape it. Try as you might, you can like, I, I haven't had the radio on in my car in a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if it works, but you know, you can't, I have to grocery shop. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. You can't escape it. I have to go out to the store. I have to buy my kids clothes. I have to buy my kids shoes. And you know, they have this stuff pumping at you in every well, possible well, way they a can. A great ex example is we had a candlelit rosary for the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. The beautiful. Church. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was, it was Made so me cry. It was, in, it was incredible. And, um. So we were there because you had choir practice. Yeah. So, and then we didn't want to drive all the way home because we live out in the country. So we decided we would go out to dinner. Yeah. And then come back for the rosary. Okay. So we go to this place. What's it called? 
Chuck's, Chuck's, Chuck's Roadhouse. Chuck's Roadhouse. <laughs> right. And okay, let me let me say, you know, it's not a bar. It's, not a it's bar. a fa- it's a family restaurant. It's, it's not, not a bar. Yeah. And so we go in there and we're sitting there and the kids are there and we had the little baby and my mm-hmm. mom, you know, and um and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking and there's like 300 televisions in this place. Oh, there's there there are so many televisions on the walls. You don't know where to look. Yes. Like it, it's like I didn't know we were in a television store. You know, so there's so much going on. And then the music. Is just blaring. Is blaring. And I, I mean, I, I think I, I can't remember exactly what was playing, but I'm pretty sure I recognized it. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was from my youth. Probably. But I'm thinking, how disturbing is this from our vibe? You know? Yeah. Like, like we go like, from choir practice at the church where we're singing Gregorian chant and mm-hmm. the hymns for Sunday. And then we just want to go out for a nice dinner because we live so far from the, not so far, but far enough from the church that, you know, with the gas prices, we don't want to go home just to turn around and come back an hour later. Yeah. So we're, and my grandma need to eat, we need to eat. So we go out and we just wanted a nice dinner. But like, you know, I felt like I was in a bar, like, but you know, it's all like, like that. It doesn't matter. But it, it did it wouldn't have matter where you went. We can't go to the dollar store. Oh yeah, because without I, the heavy metal pumping in your ear and you're like Yeah, I had argument. I just want to buy I had an argument with the uh <laughs> Yeah, my mom got in a arg- I'm not gonna say a fight, no, but she got in an argument. I, I showed a testy side. She showed a testy side and you know, a little bit uh, well, hey, it's nine o'clock in the morning and this is giving me a headache. I had to get out of the store. It was like heavy metal rock from her youth. From my youth. It was and twist, she was like, twisted sister. And my mom's like, do we really need this at nine o'clock in the morning in the dollar store? <laughs> I, said, I said to her, I said, could you pick a better radio station? Something a little it wasn't, more mild? It wasn't even That's... that you asked her to turn it off. <laughs> and she said, she, said, she said to me, this is mild. And I'm like, twisted sister? Like, <laughs> hello, lady. I wasn't born yesterday. Yeah. You know, and she said, the employees need this. That's what she said to me. And I said, well, I guess the customers don't matter. So it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you go. You cannot. You are going to be put with this stuff in your face. Yeah. Because it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And then the girls, you know, and it's, you know, the twist, the the heavy metal and the rap and all that stuff. That's like, that's in a category. It's all its own. What I find most dangerous for the young girls. Is the subtle is the love songs. The love songs the and the songs. the stuff that you think you're just listening to a nice yeah. love song. Yeah. But if you dissect it down, they're very dangerous. They're very dangerous. They're filling they're filling heads with nonsense. With unrealistic expectations about who your husband is going to be. Yeah. You know, like they, they build up these men in these songs that don't exist. Yeah. These men don't well, exist. And you know, then maybe if they're St. Joseph. <laughs> right. Okay. Sure. But, <laughs> you, know, you know, like. But even him, like, there, it's just not unrealistic. But it's not like, even. St. Joseph wouldn't even be like that. Yeah. So even. Because he's a saint. Even you know, if, and, even if, you know, you got this great husband, and there are a lot of great husbands out there. Right. But what I'm saying, what it does to the woman. It yeah. sets unrealistic expectations in her head. So when her life, when these young girls, young adolescent girls grow up and their life is not like these love songs, they they get very, um, well, it's very despairing to them because, yeah, they're you not- know, they're like, well, this isn't what I was promised. It, and, and you don't even say that to yourself. No, but it's but subconscious. But it's subconscious. Because You're like, you have a preconceived idea. You have a ID. preconceived notion about what, your, what it means to be a wife and a mother and a girl falling in love. Uh-huh. And nine times out of ten, it don't happen. Right. You know, and then reality is there. And then you're like, you don't even, they don't even know what happened. Yeah, they don't you know. know they don't because, know. Because I mean, people are very blinded when they fall in love too. Yeah, right. They don't actually see what's there. They see what they want, want to, see, to see. Right. So I mean, that's why the Catholic Girls Guide is very clear about. Well, and that's why I think this finding counsel. I think that's why this book is so good mm-hmm. because it is telling you everything you need to know. Right, but you have to take it serious. You have to take it seriously, but like but that's but that's exactly what they're saying in the very first paragraph of this book is put that falseness 
out the yeah. window. Like, you know. The one thing that um, I would say that I have found, like, and I'm speaking from myself too, right? Because I was 27 when I became a traditionalist. So I had a good 27 years of being raised a feminist. Mm-hmm. Right? Those ideas that I had, that I was raised with, that I was told, they're deep down in me. Right? right. Because that's the way I was raised. Yeah, you can't do anything. Like, I mean, you you can't do anything really about how you were raised. It's in the past. No, right, right. And, and not how you were raised specifically by your parents, but in that society. In society you know. in general. Like, it, we, like you weren't raised was, by your parents to be a feminist. No, I mean. But the society around you. I wouldn't even know, like, I mean. I mean, just like everybody else in that time period, they were just living their life, doing their things. You yeah. know, the idea was women to go off to work, women to do this. It was like this power of the woman thing that was like surging forth. And like you just, it's not, I mean, my parents weren't sitting there going, this is wrong. They, yeah. You know, they were they just. They were just living their life. Just living their life, going And all this is going on around you. And all this is going on and, and you get wrapped up in these erroneous ideas. Yeah. That, um that are secular and they're worldly and they're really downright antichrist mm -hmm. you know so and and the music and the television shows this is what's promoting this so even if you even when you sit in front of a t television even if you don't think you're actually you know soaking this in you are you are and you know i i, I always say this and we talk about this and they did it so subliminally yeah you know sorry i have struggled with that word but like you know when you if you really sit there and you think about some of the shows that are out there just mild family sitcoms mm -hmm. the majority of them the woman is the smart one yeah the wife is the smart one mm -hmm. she's got it all figured out and the husband is a fumbling bumbling idiot yes and the wife is always pulling them out of these problems and always saving the day and always, and you know you sit there and you just laugh because the husband is so silly you know yeah. but then you're like okay we grew up on this we grew up on this and and that is sinking into your head it is sinking that into women it. are the powerhouse and, and men are idiots and, and so that's why we said you know we said at the beginning of this men are furious and they have rightfully so right yeah no wonder they're furious but i mean I, I, this is a little bit thing. like the men didn't kind of take it serious either no right? i know i'm not saying yeah. right so i mean this and they want to get back their rightful pit position and that's that's very true like and they should they absolutely yeah. should but i mean that's a podcast for them. Yeah. <laughs> but I would think, you know, the only way that they could possibly do that is by uh, focusing on themselves and focusing on becoming St. Joseph. Right. You know, if they're going to focus on... What women did to them. What women did to them. They're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere no. and there's not going to be any success. And, well, I think then you could flip it around. The same thing goes for us, too. Right. We right. have to, we can't sit there and be like, oh, men did this, did, did this to us. Or, yeah. you know, or, you know, we were oppressed and look where we are now. I, I mean, mean, that's why we have to be the shining example. The biggest, the biggest fault that is, uh, the men of society have is their inability to grow up and that they're always playing yeah you know whether it's sports whether video it's video games. games whether it's you know i mean they, they just want to play all the time yeah. it's just play time right so if it's always just play time then how easy is it for the woman to say well i'm gonna do it then i have to i have, I have to, to i have to take charge ship, you because know? you're too busy playing yeah right and i mean so it's it's always it's always a um it, it's it's never it's never as simple as one side is wrong. Well, yeah, and that can be said for anything, right? right. right. You know, but um, yeah. So we got way off topic there. Well, that's okay. <laughs> but that's okay. That's what the, that's what this is for. And you know, I want to say a little side note because I was thinking about this the other day, and um, I'm going to tell you guys, um, I'm in a mixed marriage. Yeah. So I'm traditional Catholic, but my husband is of has no faith. He's not anything. Um, but you know, so I, I have 
always had to work. Mm-hmm. I have always had to have a job because my husband will not allow me not to have a job. So that's because just... He's, because he swallowed all the he lies. He swallowed all the lies. But interestingly enough, so for 11 years, I worked as a dental assistant. That's what I went to school for. And then I got tired of that. And then I ended up getting a job at a, a media company writing DIY craft articles. That led me into getting poached by a company from the States and they paid me to work from home. Mm -hmm. And you remember this? Yes. You remember when I started that job and my husband was so excited that I was going to be home and he's like, yeah, you know, this is going to be such a change. It's going to be so great. And the first little while I managed the job really well and I made dinners and the house was clean. And after about a week and a half, two weeks, he came home and he said something to me and I thought, this, when he said that, I thought feminism has destroyed the world. Yeah. Because he said to me, he just looked at me. I was standing in the kitchen and I was cooking. And he said, I didn't know life could be this good. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Like, and that, then that's all he said. He said, I didn't know life could be this good. Right, right. Because I was home where I needed to be. Right. Do you remember that? Yes. That yeah. was about two, three years ago now, or maybe mm. even longer, four years ago. And I was just like, because, you know, all this time I had been working a nine to five job yeah. and, you know, you get home and you're tired and then dinner slips and then, you yeah. know. Yeah, you're serving two masters. You're serving two masters. And then that was when I realized, I thought, you know, all these women in the workforce. Yeah. And I, I'm like, I'm not pointing anybody out this is about me like yeah. i was in the workforce and there's a lot of women that have to work. and there's a lot of women that have to work i still have to work i still have jobs yeah i just work from home now i'm blessed and i because i you know i did a lot of praying and, and telling god you know i can't keep going like this i need to be home mm-hmm. and thankfully god answered my prayers and put me in this position where i can work from home and i'm extremely grateful and blessed but you know it's just it was so eye-opening to hear him say that yeah and then i was like you know yeah, no wonder, no wonder the homes have been destroyed. Yeah. Because women wanted to go off to the workplace. And I'm not talking about women that have to work. I'm not talking about traditional Catholic women that have to work. Because I know there are a lot of them out there. And I'm one of them. Yeah. But I'm just saying in general, these women. Because, but, but you're one of them because everything's turned upside down. Right. Because we live in a world where feminists. At some point, feminists wanted to go into the workplace. They wanted, and then the they men, wanted to leave the home, and then the men expected them to be. And then, yes. So, so the woman is at home, and she's like, you know, got um, doing all the housework, or you know, she's at work. Sorry, she's at work, but the husband is expecting that money. We right. can't live if you don't work. Right. Yes. So he's expecting her money, and she's expecting him to do half the chores, right? The house chores. So the roles have been completely just, yeah, you know. And the men, I'm going to, you know, there are some really good men out there. I mean, when I, I don't mean really good men. I mean men with the capability of doing the house chores. Yeah. Nicely. Yeah. But I would say it's not in their nature. No. Right? So. Well, I, I, I'll just bring out there. I'll use myself as an example. When I clean the house versus when my husband cleans the house is two different houses. Yes. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. You know? You know it's, it's not, not in their nature to have that nurturing side to them, generally speaking. There are some yes. men that are very nurturing, but generally, like St. John of the Cross. Yeah. You know, three women, one man at the foot of the cross. It's the. It's actually St. John the Apostle. Oh. Is it not? It's not Saint John the no, Cross. No, Saint John the Cross that. is somebody different. Oh, oh blow me down here! <laughs> I know. Tell me about it, guys. I had to change my son's confirmation. Say, <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> well, now I got now I got some studying to do. do of my yes, own. you do. I got to figure this out. I've been saying that for years. Yeah. But anyway, it was one man. One man. <laughs> Named John. John the Apostle. John the Evangelist at the foot of the cross. Right. Right. So anyway. So, um, but, but that is the contemplative nature of women, right? right? And men don't generally have it. Yes. Right. They're, they're, they're wired different. And I mean, like different that God made us that way. Yes. Like God was very particular to 
give women one set of, you know, capabilities or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Inclinations. Inclinations. Yeah, inclinations. And, you know, like women fall towards certain sins certain sins vanity you know and men vanity fall, and curiosity and men fall towards other certain sets of sins usually like, pride and um what's the other one i'm not sure i can't remember we'll look it up we'll look it up but you know th- but this is this is lust. why it's lust. lust pride and lust this is why the roles were pretty clear from the beginning yeah and we shouldn't have messed with them right you know we want, like we want the call to work the way co- it's supposed the to. way it's supposed to and for us because all the wiring is so messed up for women in particular because this is a woman's podcast on what is a woman yeah we have to figure out how to undo this yeah like undo the wiring because the one thing that i noticed particularly in my life because i was 27 when i became a traditional catholic and uh life wasn't all that great you know Mm -hmm. and I started to see oh my gosh all these problems and I was always I was always even before I was a traditional Catholic I was always I was going to be a housewife I was going to be a mother I had those very set ideas in my head but once I became traditional Catholic then I did it even more so right so I was in charge of the I did all household chores I did Mm -hmm. all everything you know And, and that's fine but I I didn't he used to yell at me for not checking the oil in the car, right? And I'd be like, that's your job. Yeah. You know, like I was okay with that. You know, like I'm doing all this. You got to check the oil. Sorry. Yeah. You know, but but the thing is, is that I realized that even though I was physically doing the things required of me, I hadn't actually changed my thinking. About what you were doing? No, not about what I'm doing. Like, you can make all the dinners you want in the world. I hadn't changed my disposition. Mm. I was born and trained to be a feminist. Yeah. You know, so you can bake all the brownies you want. If you don't change your disposition and your attitude... It means nothing. It means nothing. Like, I'm, well, does, yeah, I'm not it doesn't say it mean nothing. nothing. No, I shouldn't say that. It doesn't, doesn't mean nothing. nothing. I was still trying to control the things all the time. Right. I mean, you know, and, and in my circumstance, because my husband wasn't Catholic either, I thought I had to. Right. Because you don't know. Right? right. And unfortunately for me, I made life harder than it had to be. Right. I'm quite certain of that. I'm yeah. quite certain of that. And so, because the Catholic Girls Guide tells you, and all these books tell you how to live, this book in particular it doesn't actually give you any, as as we get on, you'll see, it doesn't give you any kind of um, affirmations about do this A, B, and C and your because, life will be a bowl of cherries. Well, because how could you do that? How could you say that? Yeah, well, it doesn't you say can't. It doesn't say it at all. In fact, but I don't said, think you can say that. No. Well, I mean, there's, there's some women books out there that, you know, in the 50s, it was all great. All you got to do is fluff his pillow and put his pipe in his mouth and bring him his slippers and put on a pretty dress and some lipstick and... Your life is be amazing. Yeah, not buying it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not because it's true. It doesn't happen. It, that, that's what I'm saying. You can't it say ha- that. You can't say that, right? So this book is a realistic view, view on how difficult life is. Well, I'm going to say what so far from what I haven't finished the book, from, but from what I've read, what I really like about this book is that, you know, it doesn't, and like we said at the beginning, I think it focuses on you yes um but you you not 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 your husband not your whoever else not your kids not your it focuses on you and how and and how how your attitude yes depicts like you know i don't say depicts how things are gonna go per se but like you have to have the right attitude right and you this is your mission this is your this is it you're in charge and well actually it tells us there here i i think i wrote it out there why don't you just read what i i wrote it up because we were going to put it right this was going to be our little thing so the lofty mission of woman should say women yeah (laughs) the lofty mission of women on earth working towards peace and happiness of families the welfare of society the reign of morality but above all the salvation of souls 
And it's really important there that it says the salvation of souls. And that's what my mom and I kind of discussed beforehand that, you know, this is about the salvation of souls, not just your children, not just your husband, not just your sister, your mother, the salvation you know, your of all little, souls. Your happy little life in your happy little home, which I'm, I'm going to say there, um, uh, maybe there's some odd people that have this consistent happiness going on in their life, but the majority of people do not. No matter how hard they're trying, there's these, uh, it's just, life is just a roller coaster. It's up, it's down, it's ever going gravy one well, day. And th- we all know as Catholics, we all know this isn't our, Heaven. I'm going to say quote unquote, happily ever after. Right, yeah. Even though I hate referencing fairy tales, but you know, this is, this is not, we know and you know, St. Teresa, the little flower, said it best. And I always use this quote, even when I'm talking to people and I, I've gotten little predicaments with people and I say, you know, and they say, well, what about the world? Okay, this world, the world is thy ship and not thy home. Right. Okay, so we, so, you know, you can't rely on happiness here. Yes. You can't expect happiness here. Right. We need to be thinking but, about how to get to the place that is going to make but, us eternally but happy. But I'm going to say, you can't expect happiness, but what you absolutely 100% can expect is joy. Joy, yeah, you can have joy. Right, because joy is the fulfillment of, you know, doing God's will. Right. Right? So that you're always filled with God. And this is what allows you, what it was, it allows you to have peace and happiness in the families. The welfare of society, not just your own home, the welfare of society and the reign of morality. So in this book, we'll look into it. It, it basically states that women are responsible for the reign of morality in the world. Not their home. Well, I mean, it starts with their home. Uh, no, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. Not just the home. Yes. Morality in the world. So even when you're out of your home and you're, you're you know, you are... It's a lofty... It's a lofty mission. mission. And I you, feel like we should have called this podcast The, the lofty, lofty Mission. Right? You right? Know? So, um, so you have to uh, um, take off the rose-colored glasses mm-hmm. and know that this is a job for... You know, it's not the job for the week. No. That's for sure. Right? No. It's got, you got to have... You got to have a little fortitude. You got to have some strength. And you have to... You have to, you know get it i guess i mean we know how we get things like that by more prayer more sacrifice more you know prayer and sacrifice sacrifice. (laughs) that's it wrap it up more prayer and sacrifice but you know so we're here we are if we look at our mission not just the daily grind of of looking after you know changing diapers and and cooking dinners dinners, but that it is a lofty mission so at some point in time we have to reroute our brain to f- actually feel that way because it's very very difficult when you're in the middle of all this right not to feel the ball and chain yeah and you, and know? you know that you're not nothing you're doing is of value and nothing you know you're just i mean because we- sweeping the floor again and you're just wiping the noses and you know yeah. like I mean, it, it, these are mundane jobs. Right, yes. Being a mother is very mundane. mundane. And, you know, you read all this stuff online <clears throat> where modern, mod, the modern world and secularism boosts the mother up like, you know, she's the pillar of the world. But then, you know, I, I kind of laugh when I see that stuff. Yeah. Because it's like, but society doesn't treat her that way. No. They don't. No, they don't. They don't act like a mother is a glorious job at all. Yeah. But then you see all these little, what do you call those things? Um, The meme, not memes. They're not memes. You know when they share the quotes. Yeah, the inspirational quotes. The inspirational quotes online and stuff. And there's always one about the mom being the greatest job in the world. The one thing that we were talking about earlier was this person that we know who started a wellness coach thing. A life coach. A life coach, right? And they're kind of... She's not Catholic. She's She's not Catholic. This is just somebody... Just somebody we know. And and they're everywhere. 
Life well, coaches are everywhere. Life coaches are everywhere and wellness centers are everywhere. Do you think the world is having a hard time grasping with reality? But what kills me, and, and I'm this is not, I am not judging. I am not, like, because they put it all out there for you. Right. That's what social media has done. Everybody yeah. puts their life on display. Yeah. These people that are doing the wellness and the life coaching can't manage themselves. Right. So, and they put out there how weak they are and they put out there that they can't cope and they can't do this. And then you turn around and they're like, but I'll be your life coach. Okay. And it's like, oh, I don't think so. Okay, don't think so. <laughs> but you know, but that's, but that's where it's like, that's where we as Catholics, when we see all this stuff and you're like, you know, you have to not let society deter you from your, I'm going to say it again, lofty, lofty mission. mission. Right. <laughs> you know, like you do have a lofty mission. You do... You do. And when you get down to the roots of this lofty mission. Well, that's where we have to get. We have that to we get. We have to get there, right? So you, we can better I mean, understand. it's all, we can say all day long, you have a lofty mission. And then you're like, great. As great. I'm slopping thanks, this. Thanks for telling me that, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> captain Obvious. <laughs> Everybody loves a good Captain Obvious. We all know one. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, but it's just, it. it, it is... And, you know, that's why we wanted to bring this book to you. And that's why we wanted to do this podcast. Because together, you know, I think, because, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit it, you guys. I can't read this book on my own. <laughs> I need my mom. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's, some of it is over my head. And I don't care. I'm not afraid to admit that. Like, it is, I'm, I'll say I was born in the 80s. Yeah. I'll say that, you you're know. A mal- you're a millennial. I'm a, oh, yeah. I know, but you know I'm what? I'm not a millennial mom. You know what? You are. I am. You know, and oh, I'm a don't boomer. Tell me I am. She's a boomer. I'm a millennial mom. You just and... have to, like, I mean, and granted, you guys are great millennials. We are. You know, no, you're I'm not. Like, you're not like the general millennials, millennials. But that mindset that was happening at that time, like, I mean. Well, it's like you say, you were raised to be a feminist. Yes. I was raised to be a millennial. Yes. Even though I wasn't quote unquote raised to, to be, be a, a millennial. millennial. You were raised with tradition this, and you were this, raised with stuff. I was but raised, all that stuff comes in. It, it seeps, does. It, it seeps, seeps in. in. Right? It seeps I remember in. when you, <laughs> I, I'm going to tell this funny story. You've probably forgotten, right? Uh-oh. But you you graduated high school and you took the, the dental course. Yeah. To um be and it was a ten month course and yeah. of course you know me. I'm, I just wanted to fast track. You wanted to fast track and I I'm against post secondary. My mom was completely against post secondary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was like, okay, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I guess you know, you got kids in high school, they got to do something, right? Okay, go become a dental assistant. So you did that, and then you had you're only by the time you graduate, you're I only was eighteen, right? Eighteen. Yeah. So you're having a hard time breaking into the. Okay, first of all, let me let me say you guys I was 18 I looked like I was going on 12 yeah you <laughs> I was short and I I yeah. I was a young I've always been young, and I'm not saying that I've always been young looking right right so anyway so you finally you're in these jobs well and, nobody would hire me I know well you finally got in a job I did you finally yeah. got in a job and so you're working this job and I don't know if you're there a year or what and you turn to me and you say to me I went to school for this I'm supposed to love it and I hate it. I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did hate it. I did it for eleven years. You're just like, you were so outraged because you know what they tell you. You know, you're going to go to school. Oh yeah, live your dream. You're you, gonna, you know, you know you're going to have a great career. career. Yes, handy. they always use the word career. I'm like, I'm passing instruments and sucking spit. Yeah, this is not. There is nothing glorious about this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's not. It's a job. And I said, Holly, at the end of the day, it's all a job yeah i said if you're working for someone else they own you for those eight hours or however long you're there yeah. and you're doing what they want you to do yeah. you're not doing what you want to do yeah so at the end of the day it's, it's a all job. a job yeah there is no it was the biggest and I, I remember i was working at canadian tire you guys were teenagers and I had to get a job. We needed money. Canadian Tire is like a, for Americans who don't know what Canadian Tire is. It's like a big. Um, Lowe's. Like Lowe's. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I'm working there at Canadian Tire. <laughs> this young guy, I'm working with this young guy. And, and he goes, I said, oh, I hate it here. Like, I, I mean, I was just doing it just, you know, because I had to. That's all. And he's like, he says, what? what? You don't like working? What about, you know, don't you like your career? I was like, 
career. <laughs> and I said, does this look like a career to you? I said, I don't see anybody here telling me they love me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, but these are the lies. That they they feed you. That they feed you. You know, you go to school and, and you find something you like and you go do it. And, and then you have this great life. You don't get stuck maybe in a factory or, you know, yeah. and all these other things and, that people do. Right. Or, you know, Canadian time. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian time. But, but anyway, but they're all like, it's it's, you know, it is a world of lies a world of lies so don't buy into it yeah and we're lucky like how blessed are we that we have truth that we have truth yeah that we have it right there yeah all we have to do is undo ourselves yeah rip out the lies take them out and because even if we don't think we're believing the lies they're they're there and they sink in they sink in right and they alter the way you view things well and i mean right now more than ever you know there is a war oh yeah going on yeah a war of the mind a war of the mind absolutely you know and we need to spiritually arm ourselves mm -hmm. so um you know and i mean this this thing about the roles with men and women i mean that's all part of that it is that's all designed i well i mean it wasn't what did you tell me or did i read it somewhere that you know if they want to destroy the family they go to the woman Right? Isn't there something along that line? Well, actually, I'm pretty sure it's in this book. That, you know, if you that, want that, to destroy... It was, it was, it's in this book in the first chapter, I think, when they destroy... They go after their women. To they go after the women to destroy... Yes, morality. that's where I read it. They yeah. go after women to destroy morality. Right, and that's... I mean, because, I mean, if we go right back here, it says, what are they? We are the welfare of society, the reign of morality. morality. Right? Yeah. If the women aren't moral, the world is not the gonna world, yeah. the world's not gonna be moral. And I mean here we are. And here we are. So we're gonna bring it back. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna try our best to uh go through this together and hopefully uh, And tackle some of the the tackle some of the problems, right? Yeah. I mean so I mean as Catholics, we're all living we're all living with this. Yeah. You know, and and you know, maybe you're not looking at your husband like, you know, Okay, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and maybe your husband's looking at you, going, you're not "Okay, doing what you're, you're a feminist. To be. Oh, you're a feminist. I'm not a feminist. You're a feminist. You know, like, um, but we have to have some truth adjustments. Yep. You know, we have to get down, and and uh, we're gonna do our truth little bit. adjustments on both sides, and we're gonna start with a truth adjustment on our side. Yeah, and we'll let maybe <laughs> some men will want to start a podcast. I don't know. Yeah, and maybe we've lost all our male listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if you've stuck with us you stuck far. with us. And yeah, that was the thing I wanted to say at the beginning. I don't think I said it, but men are more, did I say it? That men are more than welcome to listen along. I just I, don't know that they'll find it interesting. I don't find know. Find it interesting or... Applicable, you know? Applicable. So it's just, we just, we wanted to do something primarily for the women. For the women. And for them to, I'm going to say, find... The joy in the womanhood. The joy in the womanhood. Right? That there oh, there's is, another great name for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that there's a lot. I mean, God, God is God. He's, 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 I don't even, I can't even use the words to say how great he is. Like, mm -hmm. do you think he really would design a woman so she could have a life of misery? underneath a or man have a muzzle slapped on her or smack, you know exactly you know? <laughs> like he designed them he designed them for greatness just mm -hmm. as equally as a man mm -hmm. you know and for a lot of joy and for happiness we just i mean i think at the end of the day and ugh, i could be wrong in saying this i'm not an expert and i don't know but for what i think at the end of the day we are all souls yeah. We are all souls. Well, you're not wrong in saying that. <laughs> no, I know. But, you know, like, and, and w at the end of the day, as Catholics, our main goal is to go to heaven. Right. To praise God forever and ever, you mm -hmm. know. So, like, while we're here, we should never let that goal out of our sight. Yes. I mean, but while we're here, we do have roles. Yes. You know, like and we, we do, do have jobs and we do want this clock to run smoothly. smoothly. 
right? We don't want our springs hanging out. Nope. <laughs> we don't want to get overwound. Yeah. You know, we want we want to tick the way God meant, meant us, us to, to tick. tick. And when we tick according to God, what do we get? Happiness. Happiness. You guys will notice over I just realized I do this thing and you the listeners may find it really annoying where I finish my <laughs> Or I like my mom will say a word and then I always repeat that word at the end of her sentences. Oh. If you got if that bothers you guys, leave a comment and I'll try my best to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, but seriously, because I do want I want you guys I want I'm gonna stop saying trying to say you guys too, <laughs> you ladies and men. Um, I want us to have fun here too. Yeah, you three ladies and you one man. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all you think is listening? <laughs> That one man, St. John, not of the cross. cross? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I see where you're going with that. But anyway, so I think maybe we'll leave it there for today. And I know we only got to the preface and only the first paragraph of the preface. But um, there's a lot of good things coming up. And we're going to be getting into some really great topics. So we hope that you will all come back um, and even new people come back uh, or come for the next episode in our podcast. And um we will hopefully, I'm not going to say see you then because this is virtual, but you'll hopefully hear from us then. So we'd just like to end by saying, may God bless you all and our lady guide and protect you always. And St. Teresa, the little flower and the little way, perfect for women. Please pray for us. <laughs> <laughs>